hey everyone welcome back to my channel so today i am back with another video and this time we're going to be doing a full set of acrylic nails step by step so the first thing that i'm doing is just pushing back those cuticles you want to make sure that you always push back the cuticles because this is going to help expose the new growth and also help with reducing lifting and also if you have those clients that have really rough skin around their cuticle area and a lot of dead skin then i would suggest you know going in there with a pair of nippers and just nipping that off but if they don't then i usually don't you know really mess with it because a lot of the time my clients cuticles look pretty good after that, we're going in with a 180 sending band. I'm using my Melody Susie Scarlet Nail Drill. I do have a promo code for them, so I'll be sure to leave that down below. So as always, we're just going in to remove the shine. We're literally just getting rid of that shiny layer on the natural nail. As you guys know, our body produces a lot of oils, and those oils happen to be on our nails, which is why our natural nails are shiny. So we just go in there and remove the shine, go from the right side over to the left side, just going back and forth until the shine is completely gone. And then I also use the same drill bit to just shorten the length of the nails. That way I don't have to go in and trim them down and then hand file them. I can just go ahead and do that with this 180 sanding band. Also remember that when you're using your e-file, you want to make sure that you always keep your drill moving at all times. You don't want to leave it in one spot for too long because it will cause friction and it will cause your client's nails to burn. So after I finish removing the shine, I'm going in and I'm applying the nail tips. I'm using my natural nail tips which are on my website right now and then I'm also using the KDS glue which is also on the website. So once you apply the nail tips, you want to make sure or when you're applying the nail tips, you want to make sure that the nail tip fits exactly from sidewall to sidewall. You don't want it to be too big or too small because if it's too big, it's going to lift and if it's too small, it's going to eventually crack on the side so make sure that you fit it exactly from sidewall to sidewall just apply the nail glue on the tip and just place it on the nail and this glue dries really really fast so you you know it's not going to take that long but the most important thing is make sure, making sure that it fits again exactly from sidewall to sidewall i cannot stress that enough but it's really really important um also another thing is making sure that you're holding your client's finger really straight when you're doing this that way the nail is not crooked on their nail And also remember that when you're applying the nail tips, if one tip is too big and the other one's too small, always go with the one that's a little bit bigger and just file it down on the sides to make it fit perfectly. Um, and for that, I use my 100-100 nail file to file, the nail, or to, yeah, to file the nails down on the sides. And I have those on my website as well. So once we've applied all of the nail tips, I'm going to go in and trim them down and I'm using my tip cutter and it's definitely time for a new one. I've been kind of using it for whenever I trim down acrylic nails and I feel like it doles down the sharpness on the tip cutter. So I definitely have to get a new one soon before I start back doing nails. Um, but again, remember that when you are trimming down the nails, you want to make sure that they're all the right size. Uh, now I'm kind of able to like guesstimate it. 
but as you can see i still go in and just measure the nails against each other but you could use a nail form as a guide since they have numbers on them and you could just kind of use that to measure the nails that way you know that all of the nails are the same size i feel like that would help a lot you know if you're a beginner but now i'm going in with a straight edge nail clipper which these are on my website as well and we're just using this to trim down the side of the nails remember that when you're doing coffin nails we are basically falling down just the sides of the nails so when we're doing this it's like we're saving us some time from you know falling so much and we're just trimming away that acrylic or sorry the nail tip that we would normally fall away remember you want to make sure that you use a straight edge nail clipper which means that the tip of it is straight and then we go in and just reshape the nails um of course since we went in and just trimmed down the sides we're not going to have so much falling to do but as always we're falling the sides at a 90 degree angle and the free edge as well to make sure that it's super super straight and then also blending the nail tip right in the middle to make it look a lot more natural when you're filing but again it's really important that you hold your file exactly at a 90 degree angle when you're doing this so you can get that perfect coffin shape Alrighty, so after we finished shaping all of the nails, we went ahead and just dust them off. And now I'm going in with my Young Nail Protein Bond. We're applying that on all of the natural nails. Remember, we don't want to get it on the skin, literally just on the natural nail. Next, we're going to go in with the acrylic. I'm using my Mia Secret Acrylic System in the color pink, which is the pink acrylic powder and the monomer. And for my brush, I'm using my Alpha Brush in a number 9. And I'll be sure to leave the link 
to that down in the description but as you can see i placed my first bead right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meets brushed it down towards the tip cleaning the sides up making sure that the acrylic is nice and smooth before i go in and apply the next bead also making sure that you look at your nail from different angles when you're doing this that way you know exactly where you need to brush you know the acrylic but as you can see whenever i'm brushing the acrylic it's like i'm feathering it down it's like i'm brushing super super lightly because if you pat too hard or brush too hard i feel like that's what makes the acrylic dry really fast and that's what creates your bumps and lumps so again make sure that you just brush super super gently with like the tip of your brush and just brushing that product down towards the tip tip the next bead is going to be closer to the cuticle area same thing patting it down and then brushing it down towards the tip make sure that when you apply that bead closer to the cuticle area that you place it really close to the cuticle area but not right on the skin and then if it happens to get on the skin then of course just go in and clean around the cuticle area which i always do anyways but you want to make sure that you do this with the very tip of your brush literally just going in there in between the like cuticle area and the acrylic because because you don't want that product on the skin um, and then just brushing the product down towards the tip making sure it's all nice and even and then as you can see I also make sure that I like basically pat the side like the free edge that way I know that it's nice and smooth and even after that we're gonna go in and apply the fourth bead as you can see it's a bit smaller and this one is just gonna go right in the middle and this is what's gonna help build our apex as you can see every time that I lift that nail up that's me checking the nail from the sides to make sure that we have a nice apex if not I go in and add a little bit more acrylic wherever it's needed but if i see that it's fine then of course i move on to the next one so as you can see we're doing the four ball method and i recommend that if you're a beginner that you stick to a certain method whether it's a three ball method with whether it's a four ball method which is what i do but you want to make sure that you have some sort of technique that you're going by that way you're not just you know randomly applying product you kind of know exactly what you're doing and then of course just because you're doing the four ball method doesn't mean that you can only apply four beads you know just look at the nail from different angles and then that's going to determine you know where you need to add more acrylic because you're going to be able to see if maybe your tip is too thin or the apex is you know not strong enough so you can add a little bit more where it's needed but for the most part I do the first one right in the middle where the natural nail and the tip meets the second one right here right below the first one the third one is going to go closer to the cuticle area and the fourth one is going to go you know closer to the back right like kind of in the middle and that's going to build your apex so again it's really important that you stick to a certain method that way it kind of makes the whole process you know a lot easier but do make sure that when you're working with your product that you work really gently and as you can see this third bead that i just placed as you can see i didn't place it right on the cuticle i placed it really close to it and then i pat it down and when i pat it down it kind of spreads out and gets as close as, it, as close as it can to the cuticle area and then i go in and just wipe around to make sure that i have no acrylic on the cuticle area because if not we would get lifting so we're going to go ahead and continue doing this it's the same process over and over again if you're still having problem with your liquid to powder ratio um i do suggest looking up the tammy taylor practice sheet and you're able to practice your beads that way you know you have a more consistent um liquid to powder ratio before you actually start working on your clients um that way you know you either are working with product that's too dry or to wet you kind of get you know the hang of it by just practicing with the tammy taylor sheet um you can just go online and just type in tammy taylor practice sheet um their website for some reason has not been pulling it up lately i've been trying um but you can find it on google there is one where you know it's just like the nails and then there's another one that has like the little circles to practice your beads or you could even just draw you know little circles um kind of because i know they had a printable one but for some reason again i couldn't find it so you can just find one and use it as a guide and maybe create your own just draw some circles you know or just print out a sheet with some circles you know just different ones whether it's a big bead a medium one or a small one and just practice with that just so you can kind of see how much liquid you need for a small one how much liquid you need for a medium one and how much you need for a big bead um but it's all about consistency but remember that it's you know the same steps over and over again it's just a matter of practicing you know this is not something that's going to come to you overnight 
definitely didn't come to me overnight. It definitely took some years for me to, you know, get good at doing this. But you just have to be really patient. You have to practice a lot and you have to be really dedicated. Um, so we're going to go ahead and continue doing the acrylic. Again, I'm using the Mia Secret Acrylic System, which I do recommend for beginners because it doesn't dry too fast like other products i know i've actually used like the tammy taylor acrylic system and that one just dries super fast like as soon as you place the bead on the nail it's already dry so that definitely i would not recommend for beginners because even me i feel like i'm too slow when i'm working with that because it dries so fast and you like it, it's gonna be lumpy um what other brand glam and glitz i've used and i really really like but it does dry a little bit faster as well as like a medium you know setting time um so it kind of gives you you know like right in the middle not too fast not too slow so if you're a little if you're a little bit more advanced then you know that would be a good brand um but you kind of just have to find what works for you uh mia secret is on the like runnier side so you do have to you know make sure that you're not using too much liquid because it's already kind of liquidy um but you kind of get to you know get the hang of it after you work with it a few times i know i have um but it is a little bit more on the runnier side but that just means that it's not going to dry as fast as other products and it's also going to give you you know a lot longer a lot more time to kind of play with it that way your nails are not all bumpy and lumpy
Alrighty, so we're on the last nail of applying the acrylic. So after this, we're going to go ahead and just put our products up. And we're going to go in with the 100-100 nail file. And we're going to file the nails again to reshape them. As you guys know, after you apply the acrylic, it kind of takes away from the shape. So we're just going in and redefining that shape. Filing the sides and the free edge at a 90 degree angle, making sure that you file straight out from the nail groove, which is the side of the nail towards the tip and then making sure that you follow that free edge at a 90 degree angle to get it super super straight um you want to make sure that you always go in and reshape the nails after you apply the acrylic because again it does take away from your shape and again as you can see right here i'm literally holding it exactly at a 90 degree angle you don't want to tilt it to the side or nothing because then that's when your nail is going to be crooked but do make sure that again you get right on the side of the nail and just going straight towards the free edge at a 90 degree angle and i know i keep saying 90 degree angle but you know the angle is really important the angle that you hold your file at is gonna basically make or break your shape you could get you know a really pretty coffin shape or you know from you not holding your file correctly you will get a ballerina shape it's just all about the angle of the nail file Alrighty, so we're finishing up reshaping the nails and then I'm going to show you what the nails look like before we actually go in and file them with the e-file. As you can see, they're nice and smooth. Um, this is about the thickness that I always do my nails. As you can see, they're not too thin or too thin. And yeah, so they look pretty good before filing. No bumps and lumps. But as always, I do always make sure that I still go in there with the e-file and just file around the cuticle area first and also, you know, just filing the rest of the nail to make sure that it's all nice and smooth. But making sure that we focus on that cuticle area first to make sure that we don't get any lifting. So as you can see, I'm going um, from the right side over to the left side. Going, getting as close as I can to that cuticle area that way I'm able to seal the acrylic and we don't get any lifting and then also making sure that we file the rest of the nail just to make sure that it's all nice and smooth I'm using an extra fine drill bit I get these from Amazon and they're by Pana um, but I'll be sure to leave that down below as well for you guys but again just filing from the right side working your way over to the left side just going back and forth um, until you're able to see where the cuticle is where the natural nail is and where the acrylic is that way you know that the acrylic is not on the skin and then after you you know are able to see those three things then you can go in and file the rest of the nail 
So just keep going back and forth there. Um, and then another thing is also making sure that, you know, you're using the correct drill bed. You don't want to use anything that's too coarse or something that's not, you know, coarse enough because you want to be able to, you know, smooth the nail out really good. If you use something that's too coarse, like even a medium one is probably too coarse for this, you're going to remove a lot of that product. You know, you might be falling down your apex or something and you don't want that. So I do suggest that you use a fine one or an extra fine one when you're doing this now if your nails are like super super lumpy and super thick then of course i would suggest using a medium drill bit or even a coarse one because that's going to just fall down some of that acrylic so it won't be so thick or bumpy but the only way to get rid of any bumps and lumps is just by going in there and filing the nail with you know your drill or your hand file even um, but you know that's literally the only way so if you're a beginner and your nails are still pretty bumpy and lumpy the only because i know i get this question a lot the only way you can get rid of them is by filing the nail just spend a little bit more time look at the nail from different angles fill on the nail and you will be able to see those lumps because sometimes you like you know can't really see them by just looking at the nail from the top which is why i always tell you guys to look at the nail from these sides and just from different angles because you will be able to see any imperfections fiction by just looking at the nail from these sides um so we're gonna go ahead and continue doing this i'm using it at uh 5 000, sorry 10,000 rpms when i'm doing this and again this is the melody susie scarlet nail drill bit or nail drill and the drill bit is by pana Alrighty, so now I'm just going in with the buffer and I have these on my website as well. But remember that when you buff the nails, this is just to get rid of any of the scratches left on the nail from the hand file or the e-file. So make sure that you buff the nails really, really good because if not, any little scratch that's left on the nail, you will be able to see it through your polish. So make sure that you go in there and buff buff and buff those nails until they are nice and smooth after this we're going to go ahead and just dust the nails off wipe them off with an alcohol wipe or you can have your nail or your client go wash your hands whatever works for you best and then that's really going to be it for this video i wanted to focus on the acrylic application and you know just really the whole acrylic process and not the polish which is why i'm not going to include the polish part of this set so as always i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to like comment and subscribe follow me on instagram and twitter at get no dirty too and i'll see you guys next time